Despite case after case of documented damage caused by ECT, psychiatrists dismiss these reports as anecdotal. They also ignore their own studies, demonstrating that there is no value to ECT. Sham ECT is basically placebo control, where the person's wheeled into the room, they're put to sleep, electrodes are put on their head, buttons pushed, but there's no electricity. And so the patient doesn't know if they got real or sham. There's only 12 or 13 of those kind of studies ever. And when you pool them together, there is absolutely no evidence anywhere that people who've had ECT are better off one month later. But those who submit to real ECT frequently get caught up in the shock industry's treadmill. Just like with psychiatric drugs and in the psych hospital, it, they keep coming back. We, we used to call them frequent flyers. They would be readmitted, readmitted, readmitted. We see the pa same patients coming in and out, in and out. But psychiatrists like Sarah Lisenby blame the patient for relapsing rather than the treatment for failing. Is without a maintenance treatment, uh, you can have rapid relapse, uh, but with maintenance treatment, um, you can have sustained um, relapse prevention. Can I ask you, um, Dr. Lissenby, what you think the minimum length of time is that is required to demonstrate an effect of the device? Well, I guess I, uh, I'm saying that, I, I, I guess I'm trying to answer by analogy, ECT is an effective uh, intervention uh, without uh, continued, without any form of relapse prevention, uh, patients will relapse very quickly. The facts about what psychiatrists call relapse are these. The brain trauma caused by ECT is significant, equivalent to the force of dropping a 40-pound cinder block seven and a half feet onto the head. To heal this catastrophic damage, the brain releases chemicals which cause a sense of euphoria. But this quickly dissipates, and the person's problems return, often with a vengeance. And when that happens, psychiatrists prescribe more ECT. They call it maintenance, continuation, or booster ECT. The nature of depression is that it is usually a relapsing Illness. Regular recurring ECT treatments may be needed. Many people often go on to get what's called maintenance. Ongoing maintenance therapy is provided. And then you need another 10 ECT. This is going to be a repeated pattern of these people are going to be on courses of treatment that will last for the rest of their lives. And, you know, the average today is about 35 treatments of shock every year. And of course, it doesn't work. It just makes them worse and it damages. Psychiatrists and ECT machine makers Richard Abrams and Conrad Swartz admitted to this lack of result in a letter to the FDA. It is not surprising that evaluations performed weeks or months after completion of the acute ECT treatment course usually fail to show a significant advantage for ECT. 